Lessons uh, for the series, University Recruiting Essentials, which is a webinar series presented by After College. The topic today is interns and your campus brand. So this is me. Uh, my name is Jennifer Rutt. If you see me at a conference or something, please come up and introduce yourself. My title here at After College is Senior Director of Engagement. My email address is there. I'm sure all of you have received emails from me, so you have that, but please feel free to reach out to me anytime. You can follow me on Twitter at Jen Rutt. I do tweet out all of the After College content um, and other industry articles. I've been in the field of university recruiting for a little over 15 years. I spent 10 of those years with um, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, or NACE. I held multiple positions there, including the Director of Strategic Alliances. I've worked with employers and colleges on strategy, research, and learning around their university recruiting plans with a focus on leveraging technology. So what are the sources of the knowledge for our presentation today? The information contained in this educational presentation came from interviews that I did with leading university recruiting professionals with experience for companies like KPMG, Northrop Grumman, Amazon Stryker, NetApp, BP, CH2M Hill, FDIC, and the Field Museum, just to mention a few. Also, I drew from After College business examples. After College has been around for about 14 years, um, and we've had lots of great experience helping employers implement their university recruiting strategy. I also learned from industry research, from articles, and from learning sessions I've attended over the years, and then simply my time in the field. So the years of career work that I've done with employers in benchmarking and roundtable formats where they share and learn best practices, as well as helping them develop the technology to implement those best practices. So again, if you just joined us, I will be taking questions at the end of the presentation um, through the questions box in the to webinar, and also um, all of your lines are on mute. So what we'll be talking about today, we're a really diverse group on the phone. Some of the folks may not have ever ventured into university recruiting. Some companies might be very experienced in university recruiting, and then we have people everywhere in between. But the basics for leveraging an internship program to enhance your campus brand, they'll be relevant for all of us. I will be breaking the information into several parts. If you've attended a past University Recruiting Essentials webinar, there may be some slight reinforcement of topics that have been covered in previous sessions. However, even that information will be really tailored specific to our current topic. So first we'll be doing a University Recruiting brief overview. We'll do a brief internships overview, why they're important. I'll be talking about how to showcase your intern's work, also how you learn from their experience with your company. We're talking about how to integrate your interns' work into your on-campus events and work. Um, I'll be talking about campus ambassador programs and then also, of course, measuring your return on investment. Okay. Um, I just want to check and make sure everybody's doing okay here. Okay. So, um, Let's get right into it. So the University Recruiting Overview. Internships are a core part of any university recruiting program. Basically, those that do it best engage students early, they build a brand on campus, and they focus on diversity. They also have a clear strategy that defines their return on investment. What's really important to remember, and I will be um, reminding you this throughout the presentation. Um, folks are saying they're having trouble hearing me. Let me see. Okay. Let me make sure my volume is turned up. Okay. I'll work on projecting a little more. Okay. So the important thing to remember is that university recruiting is about your brand. So it's about your employment brand, and it's about how you use your brand on campus to attract top students. Hiring your intern or your full-time entry-level college grad is a result of all these branding efforts that you do, but not necessarily the primary goal of, those most, of most of those activities. 
When you're creating the components of your university recruiting program, your thoughts should focus on building your brand awareness with students and doing that very early in their campus career. University recruiting takes an investment. Companies who are really successful at university recruiting and at internship programs have a buy-in and an investment from the upper management at their companies. They value and believe in college talent as a pipeline for the future success of the company. There's not often immediate return. It's like planting the seeds and then reaping the reward later. So building a brand takes investment, and university recruiting needs that investment. And it's not just monetary, but also it's support from management and staff time. Staff time. Companies that do it well start early, engage students with their brand. They often start in high school, but definitely start in freshman and sophomore year with things like scholarships, information sessions, and simple campus branding activities. So in order to compete with those other companies who are recruiting or or uh, competing for the same top talent that you are, you have to have a long-term investment in building your brand, and this can take multiple years. A large part of building your brand is creating a pipeline of students that you engage with prior to the time that they're actually ready to apply to that job or internship. So I want to talk real briefly about ATS versus CRM. Now, if you're not in human resources or you're not familiar with this, ATS stands for Applicant Tracking System, and CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. These are both software products. A CRM in the HR world, in the human resources world, often can be called a talent community or a talent network. So students who engage with your on-campus recruiting activities don't have to immediately be treated as a job applicant, not until they're actually applying to that job or internship. Companies have the most success building their brand with students, treat the, the vast majorities of students they meet for the very first time as a prospect that is just interested in learning more about your company culture, your company brand, and eventually working for your company. You'll need to figure out a way to track that student engagement to determine your return on investment or your ROI of your university recruiting program. You need to figure out a way to track where you meet each student and if they continue to engage with your company around career information. Through my research, I learned that employers are doing this in multiple ways. Some have a separate talent network or CRM where they input the information about students they meet. Some utilize the CRM portion of their ATS or their applicant tracking system. Because the campus presence is about your brand, students should be treated as potential leads that will need to be reinforced and engaged in an ongoing way. You should work with your agency or your internal marketing department on your follow-up with those student prospects. Remember, just handing a student a link to an ATS or a website is not the desired result of that interaction and being able to track that interaction with the students who you touch. Also, as a university recruiting professional, a huge part of your job is being a marketer and evangelizing about your employment brand on campus to the students you want to attract. You need to build that database of students, as we talked about in the previous topic, and then market in a smart and targeted way to those students with really relevant content for them. Many of the things we'll be talking about in the presentation today relative to leveraging your intern work for your employer brand on campus are items that should go into your marketing schedule and your marketing calendar and be incorporated into the various events you do on campus, into your website, in order to reinforce how awesome it is to work at your company and why a student would want to come and apply to a job or internship there. Don't underestimate the power of student word of mouth. Your work should support those efforts, but ultimately the strongest thing you can do is to provide an amazing internship opportunity to the students so they go out and they tell your friends. After College does specialize in helping employers drive targeted student traffic um, and employer branding content like uh, jobs, internships, events, scholarships. We help you connect with the right students. Since college students are constantly changing, so they're constantly changing audience, we can help you keep um, a positive and new, fresh pipeline of students. So let's just dig right in to the internships overview. The rest of this presentation will be assuming that you have an internship program in an act 
in active interns currently at your company. However, I'm going to talk a bit about what an internship program is and why it's important. So even if you've not yet created your formalized internship program, the informa information provided to you will be relevant for you to think about and to incorporate into your planning when you create your internships program. So what are internships? Internships are programs that are coordinated and very organized where current college students are hired for real life work experiences while they're still in school. In the NACE, or National Association of Colleges and Employers, Class of 2012 Student Survey that was released in November of 2013, 67% of seniors identified that they had held an internship. Nearly 97% of employers planned to hire interns and co-ops in 2014, and that's according to the preliminary results of NACE's 2014 Internship and Co-op Survey. Now remember, those employers surveyed were members of NACE, so they're inherently interested in university recruiting, and also they answered the Internship and Co-op Survey, which, so it's not surprising that it's that high of a percentage. However, those are the employers that you're going to be competing with. And the vast majority of employers who have invested in university recruiting have a strong internship program at their company. So in order to compete with those other employers on campus, it's important to provide students a way to become accustomed to your company and try out working for you. The loyalty will pay off. Internships are the top and by far the most common pipeline program or way to influx new college grad talent into your organization. Inter internship programs affect offers that are accepted by full-time new college grads. In the 2013 internship and co-op survey, um, there was nearly a 50% offer acceptance rate or conversion rate. So that means, conversion rate means when you have internships, or excuse me, interns that work for you, and then you offer them a full-time job, do they convert to a full-time employee? In 2012, it was nearly 60% conversion rate. The conversion rate directly is related to the amount of full-time job offers available to the employer to present to the student when they complete their internship. So the economy does affect conversion rate if you simply don't have the full-time open headcount um, to slot a student into. Internships also affect retention rate. So how long a new college grad student, once they're hired, stays with your company. Again, in the NACE internship and co-op surveys, the retention rates of full-time hires who came from an employer's own internship or co-op program are higher than the rates of those that are either com those students who have either completed an internship or co-op with another employer who have competed, completed no internship or co-op at all. So it's a much higher percentage of retention for those students who interned with the employer um, when they were hired. So now this is a meet the fun kind of meat of this presentation. We're going to be talking about lots of real world examples. So now let's assume you have an internship program up and running. It doesn't matter if you have two interns or if you have 200 interns. The following activities can be leveraged by your university recruiting program in order to get the most brand mileage from your intern's experience. Remember, all the activities will only be valuable if you're providing a positive internship experience. If you pull your interns and get a very negative result, you'll want to first work on improving the intern's experience before you begin marketing their work. Some of the other activities we'll be talking about will inherently provide you opportunities to see how interns are faring. So you should be leveraging the work your interns are doing, both while they're doing their internship, simultaneously while they're working for you, and after they complete their internship. The majority of the examples we're going to be looking at right now We'll be able to be found through a, a simple internet search. So for example, right now we're looking at Stryker's intern blog. Um, but if you would like a specific link to something, I tried to put the link on the screen so you could jot them down, or just shoot me a little email or respond to my thank you email, and I'd be happy to send you the links via email. First thing we're going to talk about our blog. Stryker has an intern blog. They focus on all different experiences that are had by their interns. The vast majority of the content is written by the interns describing their experiences. They highlight the end of the year fair, where interns show off the work they've achieved or done completed over the summer. 
So this work can be used internally at your company to gain support for the internship program for management and teams that you know, could express interest in having an intern in the future that may have not had an intern before, get the, getting that excitement. It can also be used externally and be the focus of a targeted email campaign for other like students, so students who you'd be trying to attract who are similar to the student who did this work, um, used to brand with them and get them interested in and excited about working for your company as an intern. Here's the Porter Novelli intern blog. They did an amazing job. They are a public relations um, agency, so uh, that's probably not that surprising. But this is an amazing blog I encourage you to check out as an example. What I like about this is that they don't just talk about what it's like to intern at Porter Valley. They also talk about what it's like to be a public relations intern in general. Um, so what that does is that drives traffic to this bland, branded blog by lots and lots of students. So it's not going to just be students interested in the company. It's going to be any student who's interest in, interested in public relations. This is great press for the university recruiting program. It's great press for the internship program and for the firm in general. There are lots of great articles on this blog, and it's a comprehensive look at how to leverage interns' work. So now we're going to talk about the power of a single student blog post. And there's some really interesting examples. I'm going to focus specifically on one. I'm going to focus on David Hu from the Khan Academy. So David did an internship at the Khan Academy and had a lot of amazing stuff happen from the blog post that he did. But he also wrote this great little blog post about why interns should blog. He's very eloquent, and you should really check out his work. So in this specific blog post, he wrote about why interns should blog. He notes, and I'm just going to read you just a couple sentences because it's really important. Jamie Wong wrote a blog post about everything he did at Khan Academy. This found its way to the front page of Hacker News with 102 points and subsequently attracted 12,000 visitors over two days, including comments from the director of research at Google congratulating him on his work. Another student's blog post on a co-op project received more than 200 points on Hacker News, was the top post for a day on the programming community on Reddit, and was viewed by more than 20,000 visitors the day it was posted. As a result of that student Khan Academy intern blog post, that student was also invited to present at a TEDx event. And then lastly, another student wrote about his project at Square, it was called Pony Debugger, which attracted 260 points on Hacker News. Now, the points on Hacker News may not mean anything to us because in HR we read the HR blogs and, and that's all kind of Greek to us. However, these are the things that the students you want to attract are reading. They're reading Hacker News. They're reading stuff on Reddit. And when something gets these crazy, huge, viral amounts of hits, it's an incredibly powerful marketing tool. Okay, so back to David's specific blog post about his internship at Khan Academy, because that in and of itself is pretty amazing. He created a long blog post with lots of great images, and he created a YouTube video. His YouTube video currently has over 20,000 hits. He was creative, and not just a little creative, but very creative, and funny and fun. I pulled out a couple of his images that he used. He showed screenshots of his work examples that came out of his internship. He wrote lots of text to support the images. For our purposes, I thought the images were the most fun. If you know anything about the Khan Academy or have watched the founder's TED Talk, you'll know that they are all about mathematical doodling. So this fits right in. There's so many great examples of the images. His internship focused on machine learning. He shows how he was learning, how his learning on to other things. For this image, he described, to endlessly fascinate, we now have a dashboard of exercise usage statistics mixed in with random trivia. And then to end his blog post, here's his little image. In need of an internship, why not Khan Academy? And then a link to where and how you can apply. You can't get much of a better or stronger referral than this. 
and the comments are amazing. Some amazing people made comments on this blog post. Now we're going to look a little bit about at some employer websites and how they're incorporating real life interns and the real life interns experience and using that information to inform and encourage other students. Right now we're looking at Northwestern Mutual's site and their intern profiles. Remember, this is a type of content you would use in a nice professional and fun email to target students you are trying to track to work for you before they're ready to apply to a job or internship or at the same time, but ultimately to compete with those others that are getting their brand in front of them prior. So what you want is you want students to understand what it would be like to intern at your company and so they have you top of mind when it's, they're ready to start applying to those internships. So then from your email content, you direct them to a place where you can capture their information and then continue to follow up with different branding messages to them. So over here on the right-hand side, underneath related items, you can see there's a link that says Internship Leaders. If you click on that, you go to this, which I thought was also a really strong, great way to focus um, on interns. Northwestern Mutual also focuses on the leaders from their internship program. This type of publication makes the student feel good, and it can be sent to different publications on campus or virtually to showcase the students but also to brand in front of other students who would be potential interns moving forward. It's a great example of something a student would be really proud of and show their friends, which just would get other like students you're trying to target interested in working for you. This is Oracle's site. Oracle has a special section on their website that talks about interns' profiles. It exemplifies where they went to school, what type of internship they did, and what they learned or how they felt um, about the experience that they had during their internship. Now a really fun one, um, and it's probably not going to be surprising because Disney's a, a fun place, um, and we know that Disney tells stories, right? A lot of what Disney is about is telling stories, stories we're all familiar with, stories we reference in our daily lives, uh, but Disney has taken that storytelling to a new level with their interns. So. Um, what I did was I clicked on the little button that says ex the blue circle or oval that says explore current intern and alumni stories. And it took me here to this fabulous page um, of interns and their smiling faces. Some of these goes to go to videos about the internship experience and others go to little bios. So I clicked on the smiley guy's face in the middle with the yellow Good Morning America sign, and it took me to his profile. This is Andrew R. People can comment, they can interact with this, they can share, and they can also see how many other people viewed it. Andrew talks about where he went after his internship, how he realized his full-time career as a television news reporter because of his internship for ABC News and Good Morning America. It's really great. You can, again, you can't have a better testimonial than an actual student who had a positive experience with you. So now let's talk a little bit about video. So Disney did have some videos incorporated um, in their stuff, but they, they had a, a bunch of different types of media, which is fun, and you can spend time clicking around on their site. Um, but let's look at Sandus. Sandus has done a great job of incorporating videos into their website that demonstrates what it's like to work there. They feature someone from their communications team who explains how her internship there led her to her current career path. What I think is really interesting about this is that SanDisk, we may think about them and think they're very technology oriented, and they are, and they focus on and they want to attract um, you know, technical new college grad talent. However, there are a breadth of opportunities available at SanDisk, and Tara works in the communications team. This video, which is really great, I encourage you to cruise over to Sandisk's site when you get a chance and, and watch the video about Tara. Um, but this female, this 
email, or this video could be used via email, excuse me, to students that Sandus Cosmetic Career Fair. So you know you go to a career fair, and maybe what you're looking to recruit um, is a technical position. However, you meet all kinds of students. So you're going to be getting students' information, um, and they're going to be signing up for your talent community or your talent network, students who are humanities majors, who have business majors. And then what do you do? with those other students and, and you don't want to lose the opportunity that you had. There may be some top students in the search humanities that are in there that will be gems to work for your organization. So if you have something like this that is specifically directed towards that audience, when you get home or get back to your office, you create a wonderful little email with some content. You link to your video or you embed the video in your email and you send it out to those business and humanities grads, um, excuse me, students. So that when they're ready to graduate, they're going to think about Sandus as a place to come and work. Now, this probably isn't going to surprise you, and this isn't a very exciting image, um, but I wanted you just to know it's out there, and I wanted you to go and do some of your own research on this. Google has a whole YouTube channel uh, about their internship programs. They have amazing videos, first of all. Uh, about what it's like that incorporate the students' experiences. And then they've embedded a way to go and check out the current internship opportunities from all of their videos. The fantastic thing about using video is that they find the students when they're ready to learn about your information. It's content that's there and waiting for the students to view on their own time. So what are other ways to market or evangelize or get the word out about your internship programs? So I talked earlier about how the university recruiting team is a bit like um, a marketing team at times, making sure you're getting the word out about your interns. Um, and a great way to do this is by having internship focuses. So the example here is from a student newspaper at the University of Florida. It's an expose on the student and her internship at the White House. Oftentimes, career center sites have intern stories incorporated into their website or newsletters that they send out to students that have intern focuses. Anywhere you have an internship story published, you can then take that and use that information to attract more like students towards your brand to hear about your company and plant seeds for them to consider you for an internship or for their first time full grad employment once it's time for them to apply. And then you drive that traffic, you engage them with the article, and then you drive them to interested in learning more about us. It doesn't have to be to that moment of applying for an intern. It could be, um, it could be driving to, to an internship posting. But mostly it's just driving them to an interest form and then having them um, continuing to reinforce your brand with them. So here is um, University of Portland Engineering site. If you're from the West Coast, there's this age-old, really famous competition um, between Intel and Nike interns. According to the NACE Internship and Co-op Survey, employers identified the most popular benefit given to interns continued to be the least expensive to employers, which were planned social activities, paid off holidays, and simple recognition for work service or time. Those were the things that topped the list. This is a great example of social activities. Again, um, this is a really well-known competition in the student and the academic world. They compete, the interns compete in all sorts of things. They compete in serious things and some fun, silly things. If you did an internet search on Intel versus Nike interns, you get a lot of hits about the different things they do. This is a great way to drum up brand excitement about your companies and get students involved in talking and also engage um, departments at the universities to think about your company. So look, this um, got a little focused and feature actually on the department website um, at the University of Portland School of Engineering. Great way to get in front of the other students you're trying to target. And then learning from the intern's experience. Nearly every employer I spoke to identified clear and coordinated processes that they had in place for learning from their interns. There were check-ins with managers. Um, there definitely was a coordinated exit interview strategy that included an evaluation process. Where things differed, pardon me, was what
what was then done with the information that they learned uh, from those students. So in the last section that we just did, we talked a lot about how you can take interns' experiences and leverage them to engage more interns. But how can you leverage simply the fact that they're, they are an intern? They have experienced your company culture and have a unique lens to understand what will resonate with their peers. You're going to use them. You're going to use them as a focus group and you're going to ask them. Just simply ask them. Test out your marketing materials on your intern. Ask for their feedback. Are you currently giving away stress balls at career fairs? What do they think of that? Do they think your process for capturing passive candidates or students being able to express interest before they apply is working? What did they think of the application process? What were the things that attracted them to come and intern at your company? Now that they're there, what are the things that they wish they would have known or that's a hidden gem that you didn't tell them prior? Create a focus group. Ask them questions. Try things out on them. Encourage them to express ideas and then use that information to adapt and learn. Practice the pitch you're using on them. Incorporate them into your practice because they're your target audience. What are you saying at your career fair booth? How does it resonate? What aren't you saying that you should be? What are you saying that you shouldn't be? What are the types of things that would attract them to a career fair booth? Same thing with your information sessions on campus. What happened at the best information session they ever attended? What happened at the worst or most boring information session? Leverage them and learn from them. When Mary Scott was asked, what's the most common and mistake an employer makes around branding, she said, overestimating the impact of marketing materials. Ultimately, it's what students tell each other, not what a website or a brochure or a commercially produced product might imply. So with this in mind, it's the most important thing that will come from your internship program is what students say to other students. Before you bother creating marketing messages or buying giveaways for your booth, make sure your interns are having a positive experience and that they share that with others. Okay, now we're going to move into on-campus integration, how you're incorporating your interns into the things that you're doing on campus, and as particularly back on their own campus, right? They return back to the campus, and it's probably going to be one of your target schools. So at career fairs, invite them to work your career fair booth, but make sure you train them. All of us who are in the human resources community know that there's certain legalities um, you may only want them to be very conversational uh, when it comes to time. If you're using a talent community, you don't have to worry as much about this because you're not accepting any kind of job applications. You're simply gathering the interest and then to send more information for people who are eventually ready to apply. But if you invite students to be at your booth, their peers are going to come and visit simply because they're at your booth. And then others who don't even know them will also appreciate their real-world experience. We live in a world right now where individual referrals is what we value. Look at Yelp. Before you go out to dinner, you go and you read the experiences that other people had. Or TripAdvisor. Before you stay in a hotel, you want to go and you want to read the experiences that other people had at those hotels. Employment's no different. And the most valuable thing you can have is a student who they can relate to giving out that information. What about your information sessions you're doing on campus in your classroom presentations? Is there a way that you can have them speak about their internship work experience in your actual info sessions you're doing on their campus or in a classroom presentation in front of their peers? Hearing from another student is your most valuable asset you have to, to engage more like students. It resonates and it has more trust associated especially if it's directly related to an exciting project that impacts what they're learning in their academic endeavors. So refer back, remember the Khan Academy stuff? That would be super fun and exciting for other students in that type of classroom to listen to and to hear about. And then lastly, faculty relationships. In the NACE Recruiting Benchmark Survey, faculty relationships are of critical importance to the success of branding on campus. How you develop these relationships can be different at different programs, but don't discount the role your interns can play in leveraging these relationships. They can do introductions and they can be a liaison to present in the classroom about their experiences. Create a game plan with your interns. Keep track of what their classes are for their next quarter. See if those classes are classes that are targets for you. Um, are there ways that you can partner?
And then lastly, leveraging campus ambassadors. Many employers have specific and coordinated programs where students are on campus talking about the employer's brands, whether it's a um, consumer brand or their employment brand. Now, consumer brand and employment brand are two different things, and it's really important to know that. Just because you have a strong consumer brand does not necessarily mean you have a strong um, employment brand with students. So campus ambassadors can be one way that you can leverage your employment brand on campus. So here's another quote that I thought was really great. Um, you can't beat furthering your brand than hiring students, giving them good work experience, and then sending them back to campus so they can tell their friends and classmates about it. This is a quote from Jeff Goodman, um, who is a longtime professional uh, on the employer side in university recruiting. Uh, he's now principal consultant at Campus Strategic Partners. So there are all different types of campus ambassador programs. Some are available exclusively to former interns, and some are available to any student on a target campus, and then there's everywhere in between. The one thing they have in common is they all have very clearly defined roles and clearly defined goals. I'm going to highly encourage you to check out the After College Employer blog. There was an excellent article written on creating a student ambassador program. Um, there were all kinds of actual job descriptions for student ambassadors linked from it. There was also lots of information about what the goals are and the companies who are doing it. But at a minimum, you want to make sure your interns who have successfully completed your program are returning back to campus, they, and then they know what to tell others who are interested. They're going to be talking about their internship experience. They're going to be just chatting it up when they're eating. They're going to be talking to their friends in social situations. They're going to be talking about it in academic situations. They're going to be referencing it in their academic papers that they're writing. So if someone asks them or is interested in working for your company, you want them to know what to say. You want them to know where to direct someone. If you have some type of referral program you've created for your students, um, ambassadors or for your interns returning back to, to campus or to their college. Make sure they know what that is. Make sure they know how people can use their name. Um, do you want them to be able to send you an email directly? So for example, if they have a top student, is it okay for them to do an introduction to you? Or is there some other kind of process where they should be sending people to your talent community, but maybe there's a, re a referral field in your talent community so that the student can say, make sure you put my name in the referral field um, because it'll draw specific, you know, great attention to you. So leverage all of those connections and go and read the student ambassador article on the employer blog. Okay, now measuring ROI. You do all this work, and I pretty much guarantee you that your company isn't going to continue to say, do all this work if you aren't showing any kind of return on investment results. So let's talk a minute about tracking um, and being very specific um, about the students you're engaging in the branding messages you create relative to your internship program. So this should look familiar. I talked with you about this at the very beginning. Measuring your ROI or your return on investment is about measuring your brand recognition and then measuring the subsequent engagement of the, student, the original student you engaged throughout their time engaging with your university rec recruiting program. Watching videos, reading, opening emails, attending information sessions, applying to scholarships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your talent community should be tracking all, or your CRM should be tracking all those interactions. And then it should be coordinated with your ATS, or your applicant tracking system, so you can see how it then translates to your applies for internships and full-time new grad jobs, and ultimately to your hires, and then ultimately to your retention. Many companies work closely with their agencies or their marketing departments to have a comprehensive, consistent outreach policy to students in their talent pipeline. This could be via email, US mail, social media, but all of the work reinforces your brand. It can be focused on the events you're hosting to continue to engage and educate the students on your company brand, your culture, and your eventual opportunities. However, brand awareness is one of the trickiest things to measure. You must track for a long lead time. As we already discussed, 
because established and well-managed university recruiting programs or, or long existing university recruiting programs engage students early and re-engage them over time, there can also be a time lag in your return on investment. You need to prepare your management for this and clearly explain the process and the goals. If you've coordinated your CRM and your ATS or your talent network and your applicant tracking system, your university recruiting program should be getting credit for hires that came in through your pipeline on any touch of a branding campaign. And that should be considered a success of your program. Make sure your data is tracked. That's the only way to do this. The investment you're making now may not have an immediate large return, but if you're tracking your ROI correctly, it will just continue to build and reap benefits for your company. So how do you measure brand awareness on campus? I know I've just been talking about branding, branding, branding. Um, and then this presentation has been about university recruiting is about your brand and the job and internship applicants come from that brand engagement. Those companies that are having great success in university recruiting get their brand in front of their target students and then they measure how their brand awareness is changing on the campuses that they've focused on. So how are they doing that? There are several ways. They do student custom surveys and they do student focus groups. There are multiple consultants that perform this work on behalf of employers. Mary Scott, who I quoted earlier, is one of the best known in the industry. She also has lots of great student research that you can learn from. After College also has something called the Employer Popularity Index. It's one tool that you can use to gauge your brand awareness on a specific campus. It tracks the number of students who follow your company. So students follow a company when they're not yet ready to apply, but they want to that they can learn more about that company culture, that company's information, and that they're informed when job and internship postings come up um, and then they're notified of it. And you can measure how your brand awareness increases via um, those students on those campuses. So if you're interested in knowing, we call it the EPI, stands for Employer Popularity Index. If you're interested in knowing your EPI ranking um, and, and uh, uh, judging how it's changing and increasing on campuses you're focusing on, After College is happy to help you with that. And you can just reply to my little email I send you afterwards, and I'm happy to hook you up with someone who can help you with that. So a couple of plugs. I want you to, really, I want you to engage with our employer blog. The content is amazing. Um, you just have to subscribe to your email, and when a new post comes up, it's sent to you. And then I also, want you to know a little bit about how After College can help you. So After College helps you promote your campus activities. The worst thing that happens is you invest all this information, you invest in all this branding, you invest in creating your intern stories and the wonderful emails you're going to send out to students, but you don't have the students or the audience to get your, your information in front of. That's what After College specializes in, and we have a solution to help you solve this. So what we do is we help employers with messaging out to the right students by their school and by their major. We do this via departments and student groups and actually directly to students who are already engaged with after college. You can advertise or you can evangelize your events, your jobs, your internships, and any other branding message about your company. So you can talk with me, you can um, connect with an after college representative, or um, just simply respond to the email I send you afterwards. There'll be a little form in there, too. Shameless plug for my next University Recruiting Essentials webinar series. Um, I have a new one coming out next quarter. That's Are You Attracting Top Students to Your Company? This is more of a general university recruiting overview, so um, the top components of university recruiting programs. Then I have deep dives into Are You Creating a Career Fair Strategy? building brand recognition with scholarships, and making your brand memorable with on-campus events. You can always see the updated webinar schedule on the blog um, slash webinars. If you have a topic you'd be interested in me presenting in the future, please email me. Um, I'm happy to explore different topics um, or create custom content um, that might be valuable for all. Okay, so now we're going to be taking some questions. You can always